Hello. I'm Ollie and this is Criminally, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today, uh, a bunch of classics and some enjoyable trash. It's my monthly wrap-up for September. So September ended up being a really good reading month for me. So I read 20 books um, and a nice range of different things. So some different genres and some heavier stuff than I normally read. Uh, So I had reflected at the end of August um, after Garb August was over that a month of only reading trashy books uh, was probably a bit too much even for me um, and that I felt like I needed something with a bit more substance. So I definitely got that in September uh, but I did manage to read some really enjoyable kind of popular genre type fiction as well. Um, So I'm going to talk about all all of the 20 books I read um, and I will, as I normally do, do it ranking them from the books I least liked to the ones I most liked. Um, and worth saying as well, I took part in three booktube events, um, like reading events in September as well. Uh, so those were Autumn and More, which was a kind of romance reading event organised by the Bookish Brands with a bunch of different hosts. Um, Dick Timber, which was a, um, a reading event dedicated to reading detective fiction or like private eye fiction um, in particular. So that was organised by Sean D. Stanfast and Mark at Book Time with Elvis. Uh, and then also Shorty September, um, which is a reading event dedicated to reading shorter books. Uh, so kind of under the 250 page mark, uh, which was organised uh, by the Soggy Expat Bookworm and Bert from Pastori Time. And I really enjoyed all three of those events. Um, So it's quite nice to get involved in. uh, They felt like three quite different events. So Shorter September, you could kind of read whatever you wanted, as long as the books were shorter. There were some fun prompts for it, which I could never remember in my weekly wrap-ups. Autumn and More, I really enjoyed, because I've been reading more romantic fiction recently. Um, So it's fun to to kind of dedicate part of my TBR to that. Uh, And I love Detective in Private Eye Fiction, so Dick Temper was brilliant too. Um, but I'm, and and the you know taken together the three meant that I managed to get a decent amount of variety um, into my month. Um, so yeah, let me talk you through what I read. So the worst book I read definitely uh, was this uh, "Sweet Temptation" by Lorian Blair, uh, a romance from the Silhouette Desire um, line uh, with a fantastically cheesy eighties cover uh, with a couple of people in uh, sportswear there. Um, getting passionate with each other Um, and being from the desire line this was a bit naughtier than some romances um it was it was pretty bad (laughs) and it was quite objectionable um in many ways so about a um a woman who runs a sweet shop um who used to be uh, a bit overweight uh, but is no longer um who falls for this incredibly horrible and arrogant rich guy um, he was just a complete dick throughout the the whole uh, throughout the whole book. He was awful, even at the end. I couldn't see what she saw in him. Um, yeah, and it was just it was quite offensive at times um, in the kind of fat shaming elements of it, um, and just yeah, not terribly entertaining. I mean, it was okay. I finished it, but it wasn't brilliant. Uh, and did I? Yeah, so I didn't have any DNFs at all this month. So let's throw that in there as well. Um, so second worst book I don't have a physical copy of uh, that was Beast House by Richard Lehman. So um, I kind of have a love hate relationship with Lehman, as anyone who's watched the channel for any length of time will know. Um, I really enjoy him sometimes. I really don't enjoy him at other times. Um, so Beast House I did as a buddy read uh, with MJ from Rune This Life, who I think ended up enjoying it a bit more than me. Um, it's it's a sequel to The Cellar, and it felt very much like a retread of The Cellar. Um, with various uh, people going to this place, the Beast House, um, which is a a, a place where like all these murders have happened um, over the years. And lo and behold, there are monsters that live there, but nobody actually realises that. Um, And in this book, uh, the the one thing that was quite interesting in this book is one of the characters is an author who's kind of um, got wind of the fact that there's funny goings on here and he's had success with like an Amityville horror type book in the past so he's gonna he's he's trying to do research to write a book about the Beast House um so it it had tons of kind of graphic sex and violence which was reasonably entertaining but where it fell down and where the first book the Beast House uh, sorry the first book the seller is so good is the seller just gets crazier and crazier and crazier as it goes on um whereas the Beast House 
there's there's no additional craziness. So all the craziness you already know about from the seller. Um, so it just felt like a bit of a carbon copy of the of the first book. Um, but I enjoyed doing the, the buddy read with MJ anyway. Um, next up then uh, was uh, this, another one I read for Autumn and More. So this is Force of Nature uh, by Christina Cook, which is from the Harlequin NASCAR line. Um, and I forgot to say, so let me try and remember what the different weeks were for Autumn and More. So this I read for Sweet or Spicy re- uh, Week, where you could read something that was either kind of innocent or something that was a bit more explicit Um, and this one there was a week where you could read either traditionally published or independently published books so I read this as a a traditionally published coming as it does from Harlequin who are you know the biggest publishers of romance in the world so this was okay so I'm quite entertained by these NASCAR books just because it's quite an interesting setting so in this one um the female character is a um, a driver, which was quite interesting and unusual. So you get some stuff about her, you know, her struggles as a woman in the in the world of motor racing, um, and the um, the guy was like a um, he was kind of like an intermediary between um, like the the racing people and um, this vineyard who wanted a like the new face for their uh, for their advertising um, and wanted to sponsor um you know the car of a NASCAR driver which seems like quite a strange combination but anyway um so yeah it was a it was a fine kind of, kind of quite entertaining romance no surprises at all in it but sometimes that's the fun of genre fiction isn't it um so yeah I enjoyed it but not as much as the other NASCAR romance which I read last month uh, which I really liked a lot um, after that then uh, something a bit trashier or as, as trashy maybe uh, so Jaws 2 um, which is a novelization of an earlier version of the, the script than the one that they ended up filming so it's quite different from the from the movie um, it was quite fun um, it does a good job of kind of painting the community of, of Amity um, and talking about the impacts of the um, you know the initial shark attack on both the community and the um, the Brody family, um, but there's hardly any shark action. In it. There's like hardly any kills at all. Um, so it was really disappointing uh, from that perspective. This scene with the with the water scare is in the book and is really really good. But apart from that, it wasn't great. Um, next up then, so this was for. Uh, what did I read this for? So I read this for the Haves and Have Nots week in um, Autumn and More. So this is a, um, and I'll talk about the other book in a second. So this is the second book in the uh, Lavender Mountain series by Debbie Herbert. So this this edition here has got two books in it, but I only read the second one. Um, so these are, so the book was Appalachian Abduction. Um, and he, the books are set in this place in the Appalachian Mountains uh, called Lavender Mountain, uh, which is a you know a fairly uh, poor rural community. Um, in this book, a like big city undercover detective, uh, who's the female character, comes to the town um, and teams up with a local deputy um, to go against these kind of horrible rich people who are like people smugglers. Um, so it was it was an entertaining kind of thriller. Um, you know some reasonable mystery elements but some really exciting bits as well um, and the romance was quite well handled too so I enjoyed it but not as much as I enjoyed the first book in the series uh, which I'll talk about in a minute um, and then so so that was whatever book that is in, <laughs> in my rankings just above that um, we had Summerside Lake Massacre by L.R.J. Allen so I've done a review of this uh, which went up uh, last Friday. Uh, so this was a really entertaining uh, kind of blend of slasher, uh, kind of slasher movie homage, if you like, and mystery um, about this. So set in the 80s about this uh, like summer camp, uh, which is reopening for the summer. Um, and in the local town, there was like 15 years ago, previously or something like that, there was this terrible series of murders um, and the murderer has just escaped from prison um, and he's going to go about slashing the camp councillors so trad- kind of fairly traditional um slash affair but some really good mystery elements some good kind of flashbacks and things like that i really enjoyed it i thought it was a very fun horror book um 
So ahead of that then, so we have uh, the first book in the uh, Lavender Mountain series by Debbie Herbert, Appalachian Prey. So this one was just, fun. the thing I loved about this book is it throws you in at the beginning with a load of backstory that it introduces very skillfully as the book progresses. Um, but basically it's about this young woman who is from Lavender Mountain but has moved away, who goes back um, her family are moonshiners, so there's all this cool stuff about the kind of, you know, the kind of moonshine uh, criminal life, if you like. Um, there's the local cop um, who she falls in love with, um, and she's pregnant as well. Um, so she's had a relationship with this cop in the past when she first came back to the town. Then they split up. Now she's pregnant with this child, and it's like, will they get back together or not? Um, what's happening? There's like murders and stuff. It was just a really, really entertaining read. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, just ahead of that, so um, The Moon is a Harsh Mistress by Robert Heinlein, uh, which we read for the Berthier, uh, Berthier Book Tag Reading Group. Um, so this is a, um, is it late 60s or early 70s? I think it's late 60s, um, or maybe early 70s, it's kind of on the cusp. Um, a sci-fi novel from, from that period by uh, Robert Heinlein, who you know is recognised as one of the giants of sci-fi, but is also recognised as having... Um, quite fixed political views and being a bit of a libertarian um, and, you know, a bit of a right winger. So it was, uh, there was an awful lot I liked about this book. So it's got some incredibly good stuff that's kind of very prescient about um, kind of AI and uh, kind of cultural things, if you like. Um, so the, the future um, that it's set in, there's a, a lunar colony, which is where most of it's set, which has a wonderful mix of kind of different races and things like that and has developed its own kind of culture as all the, you know, the people from different countries on Earth have come together on the moon and formed that culture. And I thought that side of it was really interesting. And the, the kind of dialogue, the kind of patois that the people speak was really interesting as well. Um, and the main character... Um, is a very entertaining character who narrates it or he's like an engineer um, who works with this computer um, that runs the whole you know the whole colony basically um, and it's about a it's about the people on the on the lunar colony feeling aggrieved at the way they're treated by earth um, and kind of building up to a revolution um, so there's there's a lot that's quite entertaining about it the first half is definitely more entertaining than the second half um, and the politics does overwhelm it a bit towards the end. Um, so it wasn't an, an unreservedly great read, but the bits that are good in it, I thought were absolutely fantastic, um, which is why I've rated it higher than some of the other books I've talked about, which were, you know, kind of fun all the way through, entertaining all the way through, but didn't have the moments of brilliance that I thought The Minotaur's Mistress had. Um, just ahead of that then, so I, I ended up reading two books for, and I've got to say, Sorry, I'm terrible. So did, so did I say Appalachian Abduction I read for that there was a haves or have nots re, uh, week in Auto and More. Um, Appalachian Prey I read for the first week, which was traditional or modern, or like historical or modern. So this was a, a modern read. Um, I also read for the haves and have nots read uh, The Viscount Who Loved Me by Julia Quinn, which is the second in the Bridgerton novel. So obviously that was a haves read because the people in that book are very privileged. Um, and it was fun. It was really, really fun. Um, very entertaining, very amusing, incredibly funny at times. And the actual romance, um, which is kind of a you know an enemies to lovers style uh, romance, was really really well done. So if you watch the TV show, this is it's the second book in the Bridgerton series and equates to the events in season two of of the show. Um, and it was it, it was just pure entertainment from beginning to end. I really really thoroughly enjoyed it. It really didn't put a foot foot wrong. Julia Quinn is incredibly skilled at doing that kind of thing. Uh, the, you know, the dialogue is amusing. The characters are all great. There's loads of characters, um, but they're all quite distinct from each other and I never got jumbled up with them. So yeah, I really enjoyed it a hell of a lot. Um, slightly ahead of that, something completely different, which wasn't as much fun, um, but like The Moon is a Harsh Mistress is you know just brilliant at times. And that was The Plague by uh, Albert Camus, uh, the famous French novel about a town 
um, that gets infected. So it gets uh, plagued by rats initially and then gets infected with a plague as a result of that. And the town kind of locks down. Um, and it's about how the, you know, the townspeople deal with what's going on. Uh, and it's very much an allegory for Nazism. Um, so written just after the Second World War, published just after the Second World War. Um, so incredibly powerful at times, you know, reading it with that lens. And, and uh, you know, a compelling read anyway, even if you don't think about the allegorical side of it. Just this vision of this town, you know, locking down and trying to deal with the problems that it's got uh, was really interesting. And, incre- you know, incredibly um, relevant after all of our experience going through the, the COVID pandemic. And, it, and indeed, I think the plague um, sold a lot of copies during, during COVID. Um, so, yeah, very, very interesting book. And, you know, I, I have no um, hesitation in, in calling it a classic. It was excellent. Um, but at the same time, it wasn't always as fun as some of the other books I read this week, uh, which is why other books maybe have, have you know rated high. Albeit, having said that, looking at what I've got to go next, I think most of the books um, I've, y- I've yet to talk about, I think, will be considered classics too. Um, okay, so first of those then. So just finished this this morning. Um, so it is October the 1st. So I, technically I didn't finish this in September, but I, I got I read three quarters of it in September. Um, so The Man in the High Castle by Philip K. Dick. I was trying to remember if I'd read this before or not. I read a ton of Philip K. Dick books when I was in my teens. Um, and I think I read this one, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, but it's great. Really, really good. And it, it has f- absolutely fascinating, fascinating ideas in it. Um, in common with a lot of Philip K. Dick's books, the actual... Um, you know kind of storytelling um, and characters and things like that aren't always perfect but the ideas are so fascinating um, that it um, you know that it really works um, and it's, it's just a fantastic book um, so it's about a an alternative history or alternative yeah alternative history where um, the allies have lost the second world war and the us has been kind of carved up between japan and germany as occupying powers um and th- that kind of alt history um, premise is is always really uh, kind of attention grabbing, isn't it? But actually, what's much more interesting about this book is everything else about it. And and the everything else part, he could almost have done in any setting, I think. Um, so I think the 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 alt history pulls you in, um, and the rest of it keeps you there. Um, so without wanting to spoil it, it's really about. Um, like authenticity and deception and what is real and what isn't real. Um, so the characters, uh, the, a big part of this book is about a book that exists within the book, um, which is about the Second World War and what happened in the Second World War. But it's a different version of the Second World War than the characters in this book um, experienced. Um, so it's fascinating because you're reading a book that's about a different version of the Second World War, a different outcome for the Second World War. And within that book, there's another book which has a you know a third outcome uh, or you know outcome for the second world war so really really interesting stuff and there's loads of other bits in it that play into that theme of you know what is real what is fake what should we really believe just incredibly dick was such an incredibly intelligent guy um, and it really shows in this book so i'm um, looking forward to continuing with this library of america um, edition and reading the other books that are in there and I've got a few books uh, recently by him on my Kindle as well um, okay so oh sorry I've got my post-it on the back with the Kindle book that is just ahead of that and that is The Maltese Falcon by Dashiell Hammett um, so another classic classic of detective fiction obviously I read that for Dick Timber. Um I've just realized I haven't been saying the books I read for Shorty September but I, most of the books that weren't in other events were read for Shorty September um, so the Maltese Falcon, classic detective uh, story. So I've done a, um, a review video where I talk about both this and uh, The Big Sleep, which was the other book I read for Dick Timber. But yeah, just a brilliant, uh, you know, kind of early hard-boiled uh, detective novel. Thoroughly enjoyable, great plot, great character, you know, great central character in Sam Spade. Uh, really, really enjoyable stuff. Um, and it prompted me, as the first Dashiell Hammett book I've read, it I prompted me to buy a huge Dashiell Hammett book, uh, which you will see in uh, a book haul video, which I'm going to film today as well. Um, okay, so just ahead of that then, um, As I Lay Dying by uh, William Faulkner, so another classic. Um, this was really good. So this is a book I tried to read before, 
um, and DNF'd, but this time it just worked for me. So it's about these variety of characters uh, in a kind of poor part of America. I can't remember where it's set. Is it Tennessee? I don't know. Oh, Mississippi. Um, who are... Um, there's been a death in their family and it's about all of their reaction to that and the, like, the events that follow that death. And it's told from the perspective of a number of different characters, so it jumps around a lot. Um, but through all of that um, jumping around, you end up, it, it, Faulkner ends up building this wonderful picture of these people and, the commu- and their lives, really. So you really feel sucked into their world um, in a way that's quite rare in books. And I think it's particularly rare in books probably that focus on plot. You know, this barely has a plot. Um, and it's all about the characters and the place that they live in and things like that. So, yeah, fantastically um, evocative and really affecting. I've, I've liked it a lot. Um, ahead of that then, uh, The Big Sleep. So I've just talked about that um, by Raven Chandler. So, as I said, I did a, a, a comparison video between this and Maltese Falcon. I like this slightly more than the Maltese Falcon. It's got um, fantastic hard-boiled dialogue. Um, you know, it kind of really sets the tone for what we think of as hard-boiled noirish fiction. Um, Philip Marlowe is a great detective. The plot is incredibly complicated, um, but he, he just about manages to pull it all off. Um, yeah, a really a, gr- a great, great book and definitely a classic of crime fiction. Just ahead of that then, a classic of horror fiction, um, Psycho by uh, Robert Block. So this I read in a couple of hours. I just couldn't put it down. Um, a fantastically gripping tale. Um, very much, um, you know, very similar to the plot of the movie that was based on it. Um, but gives uh, an additional insight into um, into the characters and particularly into the mind of Norman Bates. So I did a review um, of this where I go into that in a bit more detail. But a really gripping and entertaining uh, horror novel. I liked it tons um just ahead of that then another book that i have done a review of on the channel uh where i called it the most disturbing book i've ever read uh, i think it will remain uh, in kind of pole position um in my disturbing books for some time to come as noticed by heather lewis uh, an incredibly bleak and dark book about a young woman um, who's a prostitute who gets taken home by this man uh, to stay with him and his wife for a while Um, and horrible things happen Um, later on in the book she gets away from them and even more horrible things happen Um, an incredibly disturbing and uh, moving book Um, I thought it was a fantastic achievement of writing it really pulls you in and you can't stop reading uh, no matter how horrible things get Uh, so yeah very highly recommended if you can stomach it um just ahead of that, so this is another one I read for Shorty September. Um, so uh, Elric of Melnimide, the first book in the Elric saga, which I, it was a reread for me. I, and I like this book each more each time I read it, I think. There's something wonderfully dreamlike about the way Moorcock writes and the world that he um, portrays. So it's kind of sword and sorcery um, about this guy, Elric and um, his cousin who kind of betrays him and Elric has to go on a quest to find these swords. It's kind of some quite traditional fantasy tropes, but Moorcock is just such a fantastically good writer. Um, I really, really love this. And, you know, each time I read it, like I say, I get something different out of it. I think it's the third time I've read it. Um, Brilliant stuff. So, um, and what I would say, so there's two books to go, both of which I read on Kindle. What I would say is um, it was really difficult this month to come up with a ranking. I think certainly probably the top five or six books I've read could have could almost have gone in any order. They were all fantastic. Um, but anyway, the book I've put in, the number two, was another one I read for Shortest September, and that was Le- uh, Never Let Me Go by Kazu- Kazuo Ishiguro, um, which is a really wonderful sci-fi book about this school Um, and the inhabitants of the school and one of the um, one of them who's the narrator of the book um, is kind of looking back on on their school days Um, and you get you you can tell right from the start that it's set in a a kind of universe that's very slightly different from ours but not you know it's not like you know kind of space age or anything like that it's you know a lot of it is recognizable but there are 
a couple of incredibly key differences to the way the society functions. Um, and as you read the book, you learn more and more about that. Um, and it ends up being incredibly moving, quite disturbing, uh, and, in, and a fascinating kind of meditation on society and how we treat other people and, you know, what is humanity. Uh, a wonderful, wonderful book. Really enjoyed it. Um, so my favourite book of the month, and if you've been paying attention this month, you'll have figured out what it is because I did a review on it uh, and I haven't mentioned it yet. <laughs> so it's a bit of a giveaway. Uh, it was Moby Dick by Herman Melville. Um, so I read that as the first book in my um, kind of quest to read the 12 classics uh, that Michael K. Vaughan mentioned in a video he did a little while ago. Um, and what an amazing book. Uh, one of those books that um, I wouldn't have read, I don't think, if I hadn't set myself this challenge. And I'm so glad I read it because it was phenomenally good. So, um, you know, the, the story is well known. So it's about Captain Ahab hunting for Moby Dick, the great white whale. Um, but the story is interspersed with um, the kind of musings of the narrator about the whaling industry and whales as animals and society and the meaning of life and all sorts of different things. And it just comes together in such a fantastically complete package. Um, you really feel completely immersed in the lives of these people on this whaling ship. Um, I thought it was a phenomenal book. Um, definitely, definitely a classic um, I absolutely loved it. So normally in these Saturday videos, I talk about kind of channel stuff as well. I'm actually going to do a completely separate video. Um, because this was a monthly, a monthly wrap up, I knew it was going to go on a bit. So I'm going to do a separate video, which will go up today as well, where I'm going to talk about uh, channel stuff in the week ahead, but also my plans for the channel kind of over the next three months or so for kind of the remainder of the year going into next year. Okay, time for another random book from the shelves, and that is Crawl Space by Herbert Lieberman, um, which is apparently very creepy and is about a guy who lives in a couple's basement and does creepy shit. Um, so yeah, I don't know much more about it than that, other than there was a movie um, inspired by it, which I haven't seen, but which has got Klaus Kinski in it, um, who is a fantastic actor, and I can imagine did a great job of playing a creepy guy who lives in someone's basement. So as always, thank you very much for watching. I hope you're safe and well out there. I hope you're reading good stuff, and I'll speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.